May I present to you the mother of all troopies. This is a 80 series with the V8 turbo diesel engine and a troopy body. It's an 80 series, it's not really, but it's got a coil conversion in the back. I'll show you the details right after the intro. Let me show you some stuff under the bonnet. And when I say mother of all true peace, it is because it's just the perfect mix. Everybody loves the 80 series because of its off-road capability, but we all want a troopy body so you can do crazy things like this with the car. And this is just the best of both worlds. Plus, it's got the V8 turbo diesel in it. And as you can see, there's absolutely no expenses spared here. We've got our get home safe option under bonnet dual battery system. The way this works is this battery here is only just been used as a backup. Uh, so what we've got is we've got a Red Arc SBI 12 that automatically connects the batteries together in case you flatten your start battery. Let's say you leave the lights on or whatever might happen to you it's just a push of a button. The batteries are being, uh, being linked together and you can jumpstart yourself from that battery. That also works really well in case you do have an alternator failure and the alternator stops charging. Then you can press a button and instead of three, four hours of driving 
from one battery, you get about seven to eight from both batteries, which can be quite handy because sometimes that makes all the difference in the world if you can actually get back to civilization or reception or a road where somebody will find you or if you actually stay lost somewhere in the middle of nowhere because three to four hours of driving is probably at least three to four days of walking. Uh, but we did another thing to make sure that the alternator does not fail as easily on this one. As you can see, we've put our bracket for an extra, extra fuse in here, which we now make specifically for the V8 engine. And then we put a 250 amp Endura brushless alternator in the bottom of that. The cool thing about that is when you don't have brushes in your alternator, you get rid of about 95% of all the alternator failures that happen because most alternator failures are actually just the brushes getting stuck from dirt and debris when you go through water crossings and you might not be the first car but you are probably the third or fourth or something like that. There's already a lot of debris in the water, leaves, mud, all of that is being sucked through the alternator by the fan blade in front of it and eventually it gets to the uh, brushes and the brushes get stuck, they don't move anymore and they lose contact with the rotor and your alternator stops charging. It's still perfectly fine, all you have to do is take it apart and clean it, but not everybody knows how to do that. Brushless alternators, they don't have the brushes so they can't get stuck, so you get rid of that fault which is almost every alternator failure that happens out in the bush. Uh, furthermore, what we've got on here is uh, our MIDI, our twin MIDI fuse holder, which has got 6BNS cable going to the back, which feeds the DC hub. And we've got the winch hooked up here with the winch isolator being over here. We usually love to use our bracket that's sitting over there, but we've already got a catch can. So we made a custom bracket to include the winch isolator on this side. Then we've got a solar input here as well. This customer wanted his solar input under the bonnet. And then of course, we've got our aerials. This is for the self I go. This is for the two way on a swivel bracket as well, just in case you are somewhere where you haven't got all the height clearance in the world. And the customer has already installed the bonnet lifters in this, which is a great idea too. Cool. I think I've got everything here. <clears throat> Let's close that. That's it for another bonnet. As you can see, this is a Troopy that has got a roof conversion so you can sleep in the space that is being created when the roof folds up. We've also got, and that's the first time that we've done that, a multi-segmented or also called shingled panel on the roof. This is the first time that we've done that on these cars. We have put one of our big house solar panels on there. This is a multi-segmented, also called shingled solar panel. So what you're looking at is basically 20 individual solar panels just put into one panel, which is awesome for shading tolerance. So if one of these little segments gets shade on it, the other 19 segments can still work at 100%. And we've put extra struts underneath the panel with soft padding so that when you hit corrugations and the panel starts to vibrate, it will not self-destruct on really heavy and bad corrugations. That panel easily gives us 20, 25 amp charging at a good summer's day, all run through the solar regulators and all the rest that we've got on the inside. But I'll show you the back first. What we've got is uh, Toby and his crew from Odyssey have put an absolute killer rear fit out into this. Let me show you. Of course, wheel carrier with two extra water tanks on there. Spare wheels, max tracks. This is definitely one of the highlights. This is, I think, if not one of the best, the best internal fit out that I've seen on a Troopy. This has even got a proper 
solid timber bench top, which is very heavy. And a lot of people would probably say over the top, but this has also got a 4.2 ton GVM upgrade. So a bit of extra weight is not a problem, especially not when you run it on 35s, where you can actually spread the load quite well. Of course, we put our National Lunar Light on our custom bracket over there. And then this is the interface area. Uh, we've worked together with Toby on this and together we've come up with the idea of putting this whole interface on a 45 degree angle. The reason for that is you can use everything from the outside, you can plug in everything, but at the same time when the doors are closed and the weather is bad, you can use everything from the inside too, so that way we didn't have to compromise on just the outside or just the inside or have it on an awkward angle. This way you can actually quite easily see it from here. But when you're inside and the weather is bad, you can also see everything from here and you can operate everything from here as well. Plus you can lie a few things down that you want to charge. What we've got here is 10 amp 240 volt outlets and a 15 amp 240 volt outlet. And these are the drink water outlets and the external pickup. What we've also got in here on this panel, you can see that you've got the shower tank is roughly 60 liters and the kitchen tank is roughly 50 liters, which is in the back and in the front underneath. Plus you got the extra jerry can, so you've got plenty of water. The way this is plumbed up is there is one pump behind here just for the kitchen drink water outlet. And then there's two more pumps right in here. They are set up in a way that you can draw shower water from the tank or you can plug in the external pickup hose in the back here, drop it in the jerry cans and use the water from the jerry cans for the shower if you want to. You can just change the water pumps over here. You got the three different water pumps and you can also turn the water heater on. It's a 10 liter water heater and all of the plumbing stuff is located down here. So you got the Duetto Mark II 10 liter water heater. Then you have got the water pumps on the wall right there. And you've got the 240 volt of the water heater here that if you want to use it, you can just plug it into the output here. Even leave it permanently plugged in if you want to. And you can either use the 12 volt side or when you turn the inverter on and this unit has got a 3000 watt or 3000 kva inverter inverter charger from victron the multi plus unit is mounted behind the seats here and it is powering all the outlets that we've got in here we've also got uh, the travel buddy in here Toby has made a nice cutout for this. This is also running off the lithium battery system. So you can do your cooking on the inside while it's raining outside and you'll be nice and dry in here. This is also, it's got a really big L-shaped couch area. What I particularly like is that you can pull this out and you can sit here inside a troopy very comfortably and just relax when the weather is bad. As you can see, it's massive headspace in here, so you can easily stand up. And if you want to sleep, you can pull this section down just like that. Careful that you don't get stuck somewhere. And then you can climb up from here and up to the top, sleep, and you can close the little section on the back as well if you want to. Or you leave it open just for a bit of extra ventilation. I think that's all I can tell you about the inside here. Oh, one thing, of course, very important, the fridge, which is right here. This has actually got a Dometic fridge freezer in here, which fits beautifully. And the, the cool thing about this is, this is the freezer part, while this is the fridge part. So you have got access to the fridge part through the gull wing window on this side which is i think very well thought through and i like i like toby's attention to detail if you have a look even here it's just a little cut on the side just so that when you open this up that it just clears the side wall 
very clever, Mr. Toby. Uh, in, nah, nothing that we can film from here. Where's the shower hose? <laughs> No, this is all sorts of nutrient bullet. Whoops, there we go. Ah. So this is where you can store all your hoses. That is for the external pickup. So you can drop that in your jerry can or bucket. This is your kitchen outlet. So you can plug that in and use that for your kitchen water. And this is the one for the shower. And if you want to have a shower, you can just get over here. You can also use the switches inside the dash, just over here for the water pumps that are in here and for the water heater as well. So you can turn on the water heater from in there or from back there. And as soon as you turn it on, the control light comes on on both sides. So just in case you left it on in the back, you will still see while you're driving what's happening. So with the shower plugged in here, you can turn on the pump. And then all you need to do is start pouring the water out. And over here, you can adjust through the automatic mixing valve what temperature you want. So we generally set that at 38 degrees and will automatically mix the 70 degree hot water from the water mixer with the cold water from the tank and you get perfectly tempered 38 degrees out of here. One of the tricks that you have to do when you actually want to take the hose out is always make sure you turn the pump off first, release the pressure there's a fair bit of pressure in there because obviously the whole 10 liter system is pressured up as well. And then once the pressure is released, you unplug it and just get the water out of the hose before you pack it away again. But now, let's have a look at the electric system, shall we? This is where all the magic happens. This is where we've got our Egan DC hub installed. And on that side, we got the Victron Multi Plus 2 3 kVA inverter charger installed. If you want to have a look here, you can fold this forward. And as you can see, we've got a junction box installed here where all our interconnections happen in between the different multi core cables. And then we've got 400 amp hours of lithium battery storage in there. We've got an inlay panel here. Toby has made a cutout in the cabinet so we can reach this. And we've got two Orion TR Smart 30 amp DC DC chargers in there. We've got a 50 amp MPPT from Victron in there for the front solar input. And then back there, we've got another 30 amp solar controller for the roof solar panel. And then of course, our Serbo GX the smart shunt from Victron, which is connected to the Servo GX, and then our primary power distribution with 150 amp fuse for the DC hub and 250 amp fuses for the Multi Plus. All neatly tucked away, but still, and that is a real challenge in these builds, still serviceable, so you can still get to all the components, oh, yeah. even though we've got really tight spaces. And you've also got your short power input right here. So if you want to charge your batteries and you got 240 volt available, you can put a 15 amp plug in here. The Multi Plus will detect short power and it will actually push the 240 through to the internal 240 volt points. And whatever is left in power, it will actually use and charge the batteries on the 12 volt side of things. Very comprehensive system. This is definitely one of the best ones that we've built. But now, as a last little bit, let me show you, even though we haven't done it, but let me show you the suspension, which is absolute dream in this car.
So what we've got in the front here is customer put in two Recaro seats, department of the interior center console with USB and accessory ports here, more USB, and then it also has got airbags in the back. So I can turn the compressor on. There's an Airb twin piston compressor installed in this, and I can pump up the suspension individually, left and right, as I want to. You can actually feel the vehicle lifting up as I do it. So if you got different load scenarios for the vehicle, you can actually just adjust the ride from the driving position. That might also come in really handy when you actually want to sleep in the car and you're a bit on an uneven ground. You can level the car out with the airbags that you got in there, which I find is a really cool addition to this Troopy setup. And you can adjust it all directly from here in the center console. I'm just gonna release them now. And these airbags are generally good to be pumped up up to 80 PSI, even though I would not want to ride and drive with them when they've got 80 PSI in them, because it can be quite firm that way. Uh, furthermore, what we've got here is, uh, there's also, like I said, an area for self I go system installed. The self I go system is installed behind the scenes, but you can turn it on with this button. And you've got your water heater here, the two water pumps for the shower, the external input and the tank, and the battery link switch that I talked about before, where you've got the two batteries under the bonnet. If you press this button, you can link the batteries and you can jumpstart yourself after that. You can just uh, uncheck it again and then it will automatically connect and disconnect when the engine is running or when the engine stops. Uh, we've also got a GME XRS 370 in here where you can just plug the handpiece into the dash right here. And then on this side we've just got the compressor switch and the driving light switch. Uh, this car has got some steady lights installed which has been done by the customer before it got to us. I think that only leaves one thing for us to do after we finalize this awesome build is A, hand it over to the customer, which will make me very sad because I love to drive with this thing, and B, put our patch of approval on it. This one is now officially ready to drive anywhere. Thanks and see you for the next one.